Imagine now the year 2070. And things are in danger of unraveling. Sea levels have risen nearly three feet, redrawing the map of the world. Island nations have disappeared. Much of Bangladesh reclaimed by the sea. Some of California's famous beaches gone. The Florida Everglades underwater. Now the richest countries are being forced to come up with innovative and expensive solutions. Lucy's husband, Josh, is one of the leaders. <laughs> Josh was an engineer on the Great Barrier Project. After 30 years in the making, it was nearing completion. Within a few months, they would be testing the massive gates. If I was the engineer in charge, I would be very nervous. But you would have practice runs, and during nice weather, you would say, all right, let's close the gates today and make sure everything's working right. It's not going to jam up. Josh was worried about something else, too. New York City's barriers, like others around the world, had been built on the assumption that sea level rise would be gradual. But it was becoming clear that might not be the case. Scientists say they are detecting a massive spike in the level of methane in the atmosphere. Climate in general doesn't change smoothly the way you know, we're used to seeing projections from climate models. We find that the transitions from warm to cold or cold to warm, some of those transitions can be really, really abrupt. Abrupt meaning within the time scale of a decade, or sometimes even less than a decade. We knew there were certain things that could rapidly turn up the heat, but we didn't know what that tipping point would be until it happened. Maybe the tipping point is you heat up the tundra and the permafrost so much that there's a huge burp of methane and carbon dioxide out of those northern soils. Methane is a very a big worry in my mind because it's some 23 to 30 times more potent than CO2. An enormous reservoir of methane produced by decomposing plants and animals lies buried beneath the frozen Arctic tundra. It has been there since the Ice Age. If the tundra thaws and a large quantity of the gas is released, global temperatures would soar. This is a bit like a light switch. You push the light switch a little bit and nothing happens. You push a little bit more and nothing happens. Then you push it a little bit more and it flips completely to a new state. The methane emanating from the Arctic could raise temperatures worldwide. A panel of experts is convening to recalculate how warm the planet is. Drastically raise global temperatures. This is what specialists call a nonlinear flip or a nonlinear change. When that happens, we don't know what the consequences will be. Spiking global temperatures are wreaking havoc with the Greenland ice sheet. Some fear that the colossal sheet is on the verge of collapse. Unless drastic measures are taken, low-lying coastal cities around the world could expect to see disastrous flooding. Money. Citizens are demanding their governments respond to the impending temperature. The Pentagon today held closed-door meetings to discuss climate change. Our top story tonight, the president is announcing the Cosmic Shield Project, which aims to halt the disintegration of the Greenland ice sheet. Imagine now that you are the president of the United States and you have word that Greenland is going to collapse in the next 10 years, adding seven meters of sea level. I'm not saying that is happening today. I'm saying imagine that were to happen, and you were told that technology exists to stop it. Wouldn't you be tempted to use it? It didn't take long for the world to agree. A technology existed that could stop the ice sheets from melting. It should be used. Hundreds of jets from all around the world were spraying a mist of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. The gas would form particles which would shade the Earth and temporarily cool it. This is your solution of last resort. You say all bets are off, we are just going to intervene in this system with reckless abandon. For a year, there were these spectacular sunsets. But what are the other consequences of those things? 
Maybe it would cool the Earth, maybe it would cool it too much. Uh, that might be a disaster in the opposite direction. Maybe it would cause some other environmental problem that we don't foresee today. The Earth cooled, but that was the least of it. Tonight in Washington, there's debate over whether to follow China and Great Britain and cease flying cosmic shield missions. We've learned that in all aspects of engineering, there are unintended consequences. The Surgeon General testified before Congress today on the health effects of further depleting. The cloud was burning off the ozone layer. Once that was gone, every living creature would be exposed to a massive dose of radiation. The experiment was halted. Once they stopped spraying the gas, the ice sheets continued to melt, but now at a quicker pace. Sea level rise would soon be measured in feet, not inches. If you end up with several meters of sea level rise, uh, you uh, change life as we know it. In New York, watchdog groups are now suggesting that storm surge barriers may be too low. Josh and the other engineers were working around the clock to try to build the barriers even higher, but we all knew we were in a race against time. Society is not set up to deal with rapid sea level rise. It would be a catastrophe of, an, of, of a magnitude we've never experienced. One of our political leaders said not too long ago that uh, the American way of life is non-negotiable. And we're going to discover the hard way that when you don't uh, negotiate the circumstances that are sent to you by uh, the universe, you automatically get assigned a new negotiating partner named reality. And then it will negotiate for you. You don't even have to be in the room. A vicious nor'easter is headed up the east coast and is expected to hit New York on the high tide this afternoon. Storm surge could be over 20 feet. As the storm approached, the engineers started closing the entire bay wall. It absolutely had to work or the city would be devastated. It was terrifying. Then the winds picked up and a gate got stuck. That's a nightmare scenario, getting stuck halfway shut because the water will pour in and flood the city. A team was assembled to manually close the gate. They would have to go out into the harbor by boat. I asked Josh not to go. I begged him to stay safe with me. But this was his project. He had to see it through. Earth 2100. Cities abandoned. Large parts of America suffering from drought. The possible collapse of civilization. The worst case scenario in tonight's special broadcast sounds like something out of a science fiction movie, but it is based on the work of some of the world's foremost scientists and thinkers. If you want to learn more about how we developed our ideas, go to abcnews.com and click on Earth 2100. There you'll find an annotated script of the entire program. For each scenario portrayed in our broadcast, we have included the expert quotes and facts on which we base this vision of the future. All ecosystems are extremely stressed by 2050. You will also be able to view expanded sections of selected interviews. Urban areas that have Earth 2100 continues after this from our ABC stations. and the Great Barrier has failed to close. We're awaiting confirmation from the mayor's office. It was high tide when the storm hit. There's flooding of subway tunnels throughout. Four, five, and six trains are affected. The streets were filling with water. Well, the mayor has made the decision to evacuate City Hall. Something had gone terribly wrong. Seeing truly catastrophic flooding. The tide comes in, and on top of that, the surge. The Holland and Lincoln tunnels are filling with seawater. When New York begins to flood, it'll be total chaos. There's an evacuation order in effect. The Office of Emergency Management says we have to evacuate. But we've got a problem. And the subway is full of seawater and is shut down. What do people do? Authorities are now telling anyone still in the city to remain calm and stay inside. 